Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Theotrade Afternoon video. Today is August 3rd, 2023. I'm Blake Young, and today we're going to discuss bonds over earnings. Normally, we don't think of bonds as an opportunity to trade, to grow, to expand in profit. Bonds are oftentimes treated as a safety, a safe harbor, a safe haven when there's times of uncertainty. So moving money over to bonds might be an indication of safety, and yet we're facing significant earnings tonight. We have Amazon and Apple coming out tonight. We have a lot of other earnings coming out tonight as well. But as we're facing Amazon and Apple coming out tonight, we're looking at the idea or the potential that we are seeing a flight away from earnings or concerns about bonds at the same time. So do we want to buy bonds because we're concerned? Do we want to buy equities if we're concerned? And so it becomes a catch-22. So let's go through this and talk a little bit about what that means and what we're seeing in the news and, and in the reports coming up. So number one, if we are seeing growth expectations, well, then we're going to expect Amazon and Apple to be stellar in the reports. We're going to look at Amazon and assume that Amazon's a good representation of consumer spending. And we can see that we pulled back and have tried to bounce off of the support level. We're definitely defending this 125 area. And Amazon's had a decent year. So as we're looking at a bounce off of that 125, a higher close today, are we pricing in expectations that we're going to go back to 135, 140, 145? As I've brought up before, Amazon is tricky because the majority of Amazon or the highest amount of earnings that come out of Amazon are Amazon Web Services. That does not mean that it still isn't tied to consumers. It's not directly tied to consumer purchases. Amazon Web Services are a representation of marketing and corporate spending. So corporate spending is a bigger influence on Amazon's earnings than what we think as consumer spending on consumer goods. As we're watching Amazon bounce up here, maybe we're seeing the indication that that's the case, that we're going to see more spending or defensive, but I say this is flat. I would say that we are not seeing a spending push, I would say that we're questioning whether we can move any higher, and we've gone flat all the way back through June. Implied volatility is relatively high because we are at earnings date, but is relatively high over the last few months. So Amazon may be telling us that we're in a holding pattern, we're not really expecting spending, which will tie very closely into bonds and jobs here in just a minute. If we look at Apple and try to guess where Apple is going to go and looking at how Apple behaved here, Apple pulled back pretty aggressively and today's gap down close up, all it did was fill the gap. And we're not quite as flat as Amazon, but we are relatively flat over the last 30 days. So Amazon has not priced any further move higher. We've kind of gone into a consolidation period here as well, and it may be an indication that we are not expecting consumers to be spending more. If we were to go and look at all the reports that we've seen over the last few months and focus specifically on those that are tied to growth and to consumers, you might notice a couple of things. One is that last week, consumer sentiment slid. Employment costs. We're not spending money on employees. We're actually slowing down the growth in spending on employees. If we look at durable goods, we as consumers are spending more money on bigger ticket items. Will that lift Amazon? Probably not. Will it lift Apple? Possibly. But I would look at the durable goods orders as not only just big ticket items, big ticket items that are necessary. We don't need to get the next phone. We don't need to spend money on those the next tech, but the big durable goods orders, if you recall, we talked about this last week, would be your appliances and your autos, your cars. So we're seeing that bump and push higher into the durable goods and the things that we need on a day-to-day -day basis. As we look at this, we're still seeing growth. Advanced GDP came in higher than expected. All of that is showing we expect further growth and expansion. The only one that is really negative is that consumer sentiment. Consumer sentiment is fading. Now, consumer sentiment is fading and the rate in, in which we're seeing employment costs, in other words, what we're paying employees, is slowing down while growth is speeding up. So the question is, are we going to see inflation going faster than what we're getting paid? That's pretty normal. 
Are we going to see inflation climbing to where we have to raise rates more in the future? Are we seeing inflation go up to the point where we're going to see not only future rate hikes, but begin to see layoffs? Now, tomorrow is non-farm payroll. And if I focus just on the last couple of days of, of data, you're going to see manufacturing is slowing down and anything below 50 is market contraction in manufacturing. If we look at the job openings, labor turnover, the number of job openings that are available slid. We've gone from 9.6 expected to 9.58. That's 30,000 jobs lower. And we revised the previous month lower. Manufacturing prices are sliding. And so even though ADP went up a little bit, showing that we're seeing an increase in the number of people employed. We also revised the last month lower. So let's click on this, go a little bit deeper into the data in ADP. ADP can be a decent preliminary indication. So if I revise this and kind of look at the, we don't need to worry about the forecast. What we're looking at is what did we hire? What did we expect? And what did we revise? So last month we said there's 497,000 new jobs. We revised that down to 455. That means it's 42,000 jobs less, almost 10% less than what was reported in that revision. If we go the previous month, you can notice that again, we missed and we revised lower. So not only did we see the revision bring that one down, we can go back through and say, did we see any of the revisions actually increase the number of jobs. And so for the last five months, no, all the revisions were lower. So we report a high number and then we revise lower. We report a high number and re we revise lower. So ADP reported 324,000, which sounds great, but reality is it's down from almost 500,000 what was reported last month and down from 455, which was the revised lower. So we, we not only saw 40,000 less jobs revised lower, but we also, ended up being nearly 130,000 less new jobs than the previous month's lower revised report. This is a slowdown, even though it's higher than analyst expectations. So don't see that as a massive win. It's just higher than what the analysts thought, but significantly lower than what we reported last month. About 65% of what was reported last month and about 70% of the revision. So as we look down here at ISM services, services are also slowing down. So the things that would provide jobs, manufacturing of services from the Institute of Supply Management, which is one of the earliest indications of how the managers are hiring and how the managers are buying goods to be able to deliver on products, those are both slowing down. Are we going to see a slowdown in the non-farm payroll? Are we going to see a slowdown in the average hourly earnings which we are already seeing that slowdown here. So could we be seeing higher inflation, higher rates, more slowdowns in employment, more slowdowns in purchases, and more slowdown in wage increase? If that's the case, we're going to be setting ourselves up for, again, another stagflation threat. So when we look at bonds, are we seeing bonds price in another rate hike? Are we seeing it price in higher yields? Because those are two different things. If we look at the CME Fed Watch tool, September is showing that we have maybe a 17% chance of another rate hike. If we go to November, we're now pushing that to a 28% chance of one rate hike and a 3% chance of two rate hikes. By December, where before we were pricing in a higher probability of a rate cut, bringing us back down to what we were just last week, we were pricing in 13 to 14%. Now we're pricing in 5%. We are still pricing in 26% of at least one more rate hike and 2.7% of that second rate hike by December. So we're definitely pricing in more rate hikes according to the CME Fed Watch Tool. I like to look at the ZQ. The ZQ is an indication of what the Fed funds is going to do. So I'm comparing what the Fed funds rates are pointing to, to say whether we're going to have rate hikes or not. And then we're going to compare that to current bond prices and what does that mean for yields. So as we look at the ZQ, we are going to take that number 100, subtract off the 94.67, and that's going to leave you with a 5.33 roughly. And that's our current rate. As we look, the lower the number, 
the higher likelihood of a rate hike. So as I go out to December, we're going out to 94.58 by November. That's the lowest level. And that's pricing in a 5.42 rate. Now that's pushing about 50-50 odds of a second rate hike according to the Fed Funds Futures. And we're not showing any indication of a higher number than our current, which means that we are not showing any pricing in in the Fed Funds Futures of a rate cut until March of next year. So we're not seeing any rate cuts, any adjustments on this, nothing changing as far as the current Fed Funds rate until March of next year. So we're pricing in rate hikes or nothing all the way out to March of next year so far. Now, if we look at the ZN, the ZN being bonds for the 10 year, which apply to home mortgages and applies to consumer purchases and applies to businesses. They run generally off the seven and 10 year bonds. What we are seeing is the ZN is trying to close at or below its lowest price for the last year. In fact, if we were to go back to the three years, it's the lowest price for the three years. We could go back all the way. If we get below these lows, the ZN, the 10 year treasury bond price will take us all the way back to the lowest levels since pre great recession, pre housing market crisis. Now, what does that mean? It means that this is pricing in higher yields. Now, there's two ways to get higher yields, either raise the rates like the Fed does with the Fed Funds Futures or decrease the demand for bonds because we've issued too much debt. And if we've issued too much debt and we're going to bring these prices down through here and see the prices drop here, that means yields are going to approach a 15-year high as well. If I we go over to TNX, TNX as an indication of yields, we can see that we're approaching the breakout. And the targets I've talked about in the past have been 44 and 51, which means 4.4 and 5.1%. You can see the high from pre-2007-2008 crash. We're all the way up at 5.3%. So pushing to these levels, we're going to see the highest borrowing rates in 15 years. That should stop growth. That should stop mortgages. That should stop new home construction that should stop corporate spending because the cost to borrow is going to continue to move up so when we see the cost to borrow going up how will that impact jobs well the cost to borrow is already rising in fact this is the highest weekly close approaching the record highest weekly close for the last year and if we get through that we're talking about the 15 year level is the target so if Corporate borrowing is going to reach the highest cost in 15 years. What will they likely do when it comes to hiring? What will they likely do when it comes to employment? And we're not seeing it according to ADP. We're still hiring 324,000 jobs. But non-farm payroll is showing us 205 and 209. So 209,000 was it was last time. 205,000 was is expected this time. Here's the crazy thing. The margin of error is 200,000 jobs. So we could report in 200,000 jobs and actually have no job growth. The margin of error in this survey from the non-farm payroll is about 200,000 jobs. So this number of 205 is statistically either small growth or no growth, somewhere in that range. And if we are going to see higher and higher borrowing costs, which we have already seen, and we are seeing prices of the bonds fall, which prices in higher and higher yields, then the borrowing cost to companies and the borrowing cost of individuals is going to increase. And if they're increasing the costs, that means consumers are going to spend less. It means employers are going to hire less. Employers are going to cut spending, which would again be hiring and cut spending in other areas. So I believe, based off what bond prices are doing and bond yields are doing, non-farm payroll is going to be a miss either this month or next month. But we do expect a lot lower, weaker non-farm payroll. And ISM manufacturing and ISM services are definitely supporting that idea. Now, if that's the case, 
one of the first breaking points that we will see confirm that is consumer discretionary spending. Consumer discretionary spending will shift to that durable goods and to staples and away from consumer discretionary as would be representative in XLY. Now we've created a left shoulder, a head, a right shoulder. It appears that we've already broken out of this head and shoulders pattern. Head and shoulders pattern would give us an indication that we probably see about an eight to 10 point drop. And so we could be looking at 160 for consumer discretionary. But I've brought this up before as well. I don't think consumer discretionary ETF is very accurate because it holds so much Tesla. So we've done this in the past. We'll take four times XLY and subtract off, or sorry, seven times XLY, seven times XLY and subtract off four times Tesla. And that will give us a, a proper ratio of what XLY looks like without Tesla. And we're right here at the resistance. We're right here at the top. And this chart looks like we're at a resistance level in a downtrend. And so we'd be looking for a drop from 174 down to about 50. That's talking about a 66% decline in XLY versus Tesla. Since it's a ratioed move here, we would probably look at that as nearly 15 to 30% decline in consumer discretionary. And watching for that to roll over and sell off would be confirmation that consumer demand is going to be in decline. Layoffs would be something we would be paying attention to and watching for. And certainly a hold on hiring which we're already starting to see that jolts go from 11 million down to 9 million job openings. So it's all playing out very well with what we're seeing in bond prices. So either bond prices fall or yields are raised by the Fed. We're getting both. Bank of England raised rates today as well. So we're continuing to raise rates, continuing to increase the cost of borrowing while not really seeing the growth to justify it, not seeing the growth in wages, not seeing the growth in ADP, and not at the rate of inflation that we're seeing. So these are the areas I'm going to be watching for. I'm going to be watching for fading the consumer discretionary area. I will be looking for buying into the defensive sectors, especially if we are going to see a decline in hiring. So watching for this to be a continuation up for consumer staples and looking for healthcare. But overall, I am looking for weakness. Weakness in consumer discretionary. It looks like healthcare is at a support level, so I'd be looking for a bounce and a move higher in consumer staples and discretionary while watching for that non-farm payroll number to slide. And if it's under 200,000, if it misses expectations and is one of the lowest reports we've seen in months, remember that, that anything under 200,000 could theoretically be negative in that survey, and you'll want to watch for that upcoming report in the month of September as well. That's going to do it for me today. We'll look forward to talking to you next week at the same time.